All right. It's my pleasure to bring the next gentleman to the stage. He is recognized throughout the space as one of the highest end marketers out there. He has created campaigns that are recognized both for innovation and controversy. He wants to create a campaign that created a quarter million dollars based on inbound leads with no cold calling whatsoever. He's worked with significant traditional clients, but he's also someone who doesn't, hasn't reached a point where he makes six figures a year, but six figures a month. He's created multiple five-figure campaigns in and of themselves and five-figure products. You're going to want to take detailed notes. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Andrew Murray. He's from our northern cousin. He's a Canadian. So if he says A a lot, give him a break. Hey, man. Here, here you go, it's all yours. All right. All right, so you guys learned everything this weekend? All right, you guys ready to learn about Facebook? Who wants to learn how to generate a ton of leads on Facebook? All right. What I'm going to teach you, you know, some of the stuff that we're going to go through today um, has been like the catalyst for a lot of people who are failing at Facebook ads, and now they're doing really well with it. So um, just before we get started, I'm just curious, how many of you guys knew about me before I jumped on stage here? Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, so. A little bit about me, um, that's my wife and, and my son and myself. Every day on Christmas, uh, we go for a walk in the woods and you know, we do fun little stuff like that. But I'm basically a, a very ordinary guy. Um, I didn't have any sales or marketing experience. I'm gonna tell you a, a little story of how I got started in the, in the industry that I've actually, I know no one in this room knows except for, except for my family. So we basically got a magazine from my mom who has no entrepreneurial bone in her body whatsoever. And Marie and I were going through distance education at the time because we were like, hey, we can beat the system. We can go to university and not actually have to go to class. We thought that was pretty cool. So we said, hey, you know, maybe we could do the same thing with making money. So there was a, a little you know, paragraph on the very back page that says, hey, you can make money you know, selling these products. Call the head office. So we called the head office and um, they hooked us up with someone. And he said, here's what you do. You invite all your friends and family over to your house and don't tell them what it's about. Okay, so that's what we did. And you know, Marie and I were, were very nervous at the time and we, you know, we, we had everyone gathered and we wouldn't tell them what it's about. And then we you know, stood in front of the, of the mantel place and we said, so do you guys know why, why you know, we got you all here today? And someone said, you're pregnant, you're having a baby. And there was a very long pregnant pause. And then we said, no, but you know, we have some products that we really want to share with you. So it didn't go over very well, but that's how it started. And you know, the point is, is that you know, um, everyone starts where they are right now. But the catalyst for us was we started learning about you know, targeted marketing, extremely targeted marketing. We learned about branding and we learned about paid advertising. And that's kind of what this presentation's about. And we went, for, for, uh, went up to from basically making nothing to $250,000 in just 15 months. So I've been a top, uh, top income producer, won a lot of sales awards uh, for different companies. Um, I've been the number one, you know, all time enroller in a company with over 180,000 reps. I did it all online when people said that I couldn't. Um, you know, uh, so we've done a lot of, you know, six-figure, you know, launches and, you know, yada, 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 all that kind of stuff. Um, and this is just some, you know, pictures of that. There's Marie walking through uh, Atlanta, so we got a big, a big check. Um, but, you know, I'm one of those guys that really is not into, you know, flashy cars and all that stuff. The reason that we do, do this business is the importance of options because in 2012, my son got sick and we didn't know what was wrong with him. Um, it was very hard to diagnose. It caused a lot of you know, turmoil and stress for us. We had to totally step back from the whole business and you know, we spent you know, tens and tens of thousands of dollars traveling to the US, you know, seeing different doctors, you know, um, all that kind of stuff. So he's doing great now, but you know, what really I want to, you know, press upon you is it's about the options, you know, and being able to, you know, do what you want with, with your life and, and being able to make those choices. And if you learn paid advertising and what I'm going to teach you, you're going to be able to do that. So here's what we're going to cover, uh, what kind of ads work best, uh, how to target correctly, uh, a bit about custom audiences, uh, retargeting, using some psychology in your advertising, and some pretty cool stuff. So you guys excited to learn that or what? Okay. 
So here's the first thing. Marketing is all about targeting, okay? This is where people get it wrong, okay? They just don't understand that, you know, you need to, if you just target your marketing, you're gonna be successful. That's the number one thing. And, you know, I know this from teaching people like Google AdWords and stuff like this. You know, they invariably choose keywords that are so broad. What you wanna think is how targeted can you get? Who can you eliminate? Because when you target who you want, and you cut out those people that are less than ideal buyers, you're gonna get higher conversions, you know, and you know, bigger ROI, and your whole business is, is, is gonna you know, go uh, much, much better. So you wanna reduce your ad reach, and this is particularly for people that are, that are starting out. Reduce your ad reach for those who are most likely to buy, okay? Because when you show impressions of your ads to too wide of a target market, it's gonna hurt your conversions, okay? So really think minimally. Now who's overwhelmed with you know, all the stuff that you have to learn. Only one person? Okay. <laughs> all right, so everyone's raising their hands. The whole thing about marketing and your business, it all can be broken down into traffic and conversions. A lot of stuff is a distraction, it's a sideshow, and at the end of the day, if you know how to drive traffic and convert that into a subscriber, into a lead, or into an enrollment into your business, you know, whatever that may be, that's what you need to focus on. All right, so, Here's how, you, um, here's how you, you really want to think about targeting. Particularly with Facebook, it's very literal. You want to you know, use your targeting with inclusions and exclusions, okay? So you basically include people, exclude people. One group you want to exclude is buyers, right? Because they've already bought a particular product, unless you have multiple products, okay? Um, the internet really is very, very large, and you, know, you can go very targeted, okay? So cut, ruthless, cut, cut ruthlessly, and just focus on you know, the sweet spot. Focus on shooting fish in a barrel. The other thing about Facebook is, how many times have you guys liked something that you don't really like? Right, okay. So likes, in terms of Facebook, are a very weak measure of interest, okay? Also likes, in terms of broad targeting, when you're picking you know, interests on, on, uh, on Facebook, is, you know, very broad. It's not just people that like that particular fan page. It's also people that like related fan page or people that have, you know, commented on something or, you know, clicked on a post, you know, a whole bunch of things. The other thing is likes, likes don't necessarily have commercial intent. You always want to think, you know, much like Jorge said, you know, buyer keywords. You know, what are, what, what's in the mind of, of people when they're, you know, on that page or they're part of that group or they're part of that fan page? All right. So Facebook is a cute little data monster that tracks everything, okay? They're gonna track, they, I mean, Facebook tracks everything. They track where your mouse moves. If you're scrolling down your newsfeed and you go up for a second and then you go down, you're gonna start seeing that person's uh, things in your newsfeed more frequently. So they track that. They track that as a conversion. How many of you guys know that Facebook tracks what you do when you go off Facebook? Yeah. So you go off Facebook and, you know, they're, if you don't log out, you know, they're watching what, what websites you're on and certain of those websites shoot back likes to Facebook, okay? So here's the whole thing about marketing. You know, all companies want to sell their ad space and make, you know, the most amount of money, okay? And they sell their unwanted ad space to unsavvy marketers. And I don't want you to, you know, be in that group, right? So this is a little Venn diagram and you see on the, on the outskirts of stuff, that's the broad... Um, you know, broad targeting, and that's what you want to avoid. All right, now this screen, how many of you guys know you can download uh, your extended data from Facebook? Anyone? Okay, a couple people. All right, so what you can do is you can actually download your data, and this is actually my account, and one of the things you can look in it is what things you're targeted for. So if you can see that, um, you can see that this is my actual account, and very little of this has anything to do with marketing. I basically use my Facebook only for marketing. And yet, I'm, you know, if someone were to type, you know, says our department, which I didn't even know what it was until I was just looking it up, it's some government building or something in Colombia, um, I'm coming up as a target. They think that's targeted towards me. And the same with these other things. You know, Gonzalez is a surname, is targeted towards me. <laughs> That's broad targeting. That's what you want to avoid. Here's some other things. Um, you know, Before Sunset. Any of you guys see that movie? No? Holy cow, that's a great movie. You guys should see that. But half these things, I don't know, I don't know what they are. You're like Cl uh, Clifton Bristol, you know? Royal Wedding, I guarantee that wasn't me. I, here's what happened. Here's what happened. You know, I must have left my Facebook open. Marie jumps on my, on my computer, she pops onto people or, you know, whatever, and boom. 
Now I'm gonna be, you know, served with royal wedding photos and, you know, Prince Henry's the stuff forever. But, I mean, looking at that list there, I would say maybe one in 10 is relevant. That's why you don't wanna just go in and do the, the basic, you know, interest targeting. And maybe, you know, one in 20 would be, you know, even commercially viable. Um, so hopefully you could, you could see that. So, who should you target, okay? Um, I really like targeting on Facebook. I like targeting groups. I like targeting fan pages. I like targeting friends. Um, there are some ways to target friends and groups we're gonna get into in a bit. But basically, you're looking for a community or some kind of you know, group or fan page that's active and engaged. Um, it can be focused around a specific opportunity. The tighter focus is better. Focus is always good. It can be complementary or competitive to you know, whatever it is that, that, that you're doing. And you know, at the end of the day, what you want to think of is, you know, I don't know how much you guys know about the fishing industry, but there's lots of you know, fishing like trawlers that kind of you know, trawl the whole ocean. And what they do is they get you know, thousands and thousands of fish, um, and they're just going for you know, a few of these big fish. So they get the tuna, and they take all the other fish, and they just you know, toss them away. It's just, it's just kind of garbage. It's just um, byproduct, okay? That's what's happening when you're doing broad interests, okay? So you wanna think small, think, think precision, and you know, be very, very uh, versatile as a marketer. So when you guys are thinking about your ads, okay, um, this is probably the, the, the most important thing that you, that you have to understand. You have the targeting, you have the ad, and you have the landing page. If those are all very well linked, you're gonna do well automatically, okay? And Chris mentioned that in, in his thing, um, in his talk a little bit earlier. You know, the most important thing is targeting. So, you know, companies like Google, companies like Facebook, they're really interested in, in relevance, right? So if you can do that, you're gonna do better in your, in your advertising. All right, so marketplace ads. These are the right sidebar ads. I'm just gonna talk real quick about some of these, you know, what works and what doesn't, because I don't hear a lot of people, you know, actually talking about that. So what works in the sidebar? Direct response cop copywriting, you know, so, you know, stuff that's just good copywriting, very clear, direct. Um, gimmicks, that stuff like, you know, you see pictures of, 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 you know, people with weird heads or babies with their eyes bulging out, you know, that'll get you clicks, but it won't get you conversions, you know, and you should definitely avoid that kind of stuff. Um, the sidebar is a place of disruption marketing because people are in there looking for the news feed. That's their, you know, payoff for, for being on Facebook. What I like using the right sidebar ads for is, uh, is frequency, okay? So I'll have people that have come up to me and say, Damn, every time I log into Facebook, I see your ad on the, you know, on the right side. And that's intentional, okay? Frequency is, you know, very effective for me. And, you know, it's great for branding, you know, for branding your business. And it's great for keeping yourself on the minds of people that are, you know, on your autoresponder list or, or on your friends list. Because as you know, edge rank, you know, pushes you out. And so not everything that, that you show up, um, you know, really, really makes sense. All right, so I got a couple ads here. What I like about the, the top one, uh, they're good ones on the, what we, the left? Yeah, all right, well, I guess it's the same thing. All right, so on the left, those are good ads, okay? What I like about the SurveyMonkey one, okay, is white space. So it kind of draws the eye and it jumps out, okay? And it's very clear and direct. Create surveys, get answers. Now, they're probably doing uh, cost per click marketing because they're not saying, hey, you know, you sign up for free, right? So they probably don't want, un, you know, untargeted clicks. The next one down, you know, very direct. Download our free swipe file of 72 proven headlines to get more clicks from social media. That's very direct response. You know exactly what you're getting. And if someone clicks on that, they're gonna go all the way through and they're gonna, you know, fill in their, their information. The one below that, homeschooling with a purpose. We got any homeschoolers out there? Yeah, all right, cool, all right. Um, so what I like about this one is this illustrates great targeting. Okay, it's probably targeted to a homeschool group because I do, you know, homeschooling. My, my wife and I do homeschooling. Um, and so that's an example of a very targeted, you know, ad. Last one here on the right side. Why is uh, Laura slapping Andy? Find out why at Traffic Genesis. Oh, and did we dot, dot, dot. Okay, that's a cliffhanger effect. Okay. And it's also creating a little, you know, kind of curiosity and, and, and kind of like incompleteness. Because humans, by nature, have a desire to, to feel completed, right? And so if you guys watch soap operas or pretty any, any much, you know, any drama TV series, that's what you're gonna, you're gonna see. The ones on the other side are terrible ads. Scotiabank, I don't even know what that picture is. It's just terrible. And then, you know, here's an example of that, you know, uh, 
baby with the big eyes and, and stuff, not worth doing. All right, so we're gonna talk about newsfeed ads and, and dark posts. And I know Ray went over this um, earlier in the morning. And um, you know, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna you know, approach things from a, from a different angle, okay? And give you some stuff so you can you know, be able to, to create ads when you go home. So why do people go in the newsfeed? You know, they go for, for uh, uh, stimulation, for entertainment. They go because they're bored. Maybe they're afraid they're gonna miss something. Um, oftentimes I go into the newsfeed and, you know, I can't, I, I, okay, I'm gonna go into Facebook and, you know, do this or respond to this message and then I realize, I don't even know what the heck I'm in there for. I just ended up scanning the newsfeed. Say, yeah, if that's ever happened to you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, Kit Kat break, you know, habit, or they're brought back through notifications. But the thing to understand is people are looking at the newsfeed. That's where they're consuming their, their, their content. That's their payoff, okay? And the interesting thing about those kind of ads is that, um, well, well newsfeed ads, the really cool thing about newsfeed ads is that, you know, when people um, are, are doing newsfeed ads, it's right in the mainstream, okay? And, and so it can be hidden right in, your, in, in the, the content. All right, so entertain, educate, and sell. A big mistake that I see people do is they jump right into the cell. I always think it's much better to be a little bit of an entertainer, you know, um, and uh, do some education, and then you slip under, you know, and, and can get your sales message in. But if you do those first, it's gonna be much more effective for you. All right, so you guys seen Goodfellas? Okay. <laughs> All right, so Goodfellas, right? So in this scene, you know, Tommy's talking to Henry Hill, and, you know, he's, he's kind of breaking his balls or whatever, and he says, you know, oh, funny how? Like, like, funny how? Like, I'm a clown? Like, I'm here to, you know, blank amuse you? What do you mean funny? What do you mean funny, right? So, this is a good example of entertainment, okay? And as a marketer, in your ads and whatever you do online, you've got to amp it up. You've got to amp up your game from where you are normally. Have you ever seen someone, you know, um, uh, someone who does good videos, it's because they bring energy into it. And they actually put more energy in than they do in, in real life. Okay, so everyone needs to amp up their game and be that clown. You know, be a little bit of an entertainer. Be a little, of a, a little bit of a ham, you know, in your, uh, in your marketing. How to pre-sell, uh, pre-frame selling. Uh, basically teach people good, you know, uh, some, some, some good nuggets. Give them a, a, a story that will lead to a point. I think, you know, Ben Settle's gonna be talking about that. But the important thing about education is it gets under the prospect's defense, you know, and, and then you can get your sales message in. I'm known for doing, you know, very long webinars that have education, you know, for the, for the first half or, or first third, and, you know, they convert like crazy, you know, like, like really, really well, you know, very high earnings per click, um, you know, and, and, and stuff like that. And it's because I'm framing it with education. So what works in the newsfeed, okay, for your newsfeed ads? Lifestyle, okay? People love lifestyle. People love personal confessions. You know, when people are gonna say, hey, you know what, I'm gonna tell you, you know, what's really going on. Uh, stories, you know, much like Vitaly was talking about, anything that leads, you know, he, I mean, he, he, did, he did a great job kind of explaining, you know, how you can even just draw a mundane experience and lead it into a teaching opportunity. That's extremely powerful, the power of storytelling is great and a lot of people are going through the newsfeed, they're looking for stories, they're looking for entertainment, so if you write your ad like that, it's gonna be really good for you. Uh, free products, okay? And the more that it looks like a product and not an opt-in um, is, is gonna be better. So if you can you know, spend, the, spend the time or, or find someone you know, on Fiverr or whatever to do you know, graphics and make it look kind of like a product, it's gonna do really well. Better than, than like a webinar or training, but you know, that also works as well. And you want to keep in mind that this is, you know, native advertising. You know, it's going to blend right into, you know, the, the, the consumer experience. And, you know, I'll get to a couple examples of, of, uh, of how to do that. Okay. So I just pulled a few examples because I think it's important to, uh, to understand um, this. So on the, on the left side, uh, basically free download. You know, you got a graphic there, free download. If people are interested in, in their, you know, Facebook advertising, they're going to download something like that. The one in the middle, what I like about it is it starts off by saying, um, little announcement from me. Okay, so it's kind of colloquial. It kind of sounds like it's actually like a post, right? And that's what's good about that ad. Also, it's a real picture, you know, but it's kind of spiced up with a little bit of graphics on the other side. 
The third ad, that's one of my ads. Um, it did really, really good. I was advertising to my friends and I had a lot of, you know, um, you know big marketers that, that, that actually bought that. Um, you know, and again, you know, giving away something for free, free product. It was, you know, free, free plus shipping. Uh, the ad with the lion, photoshopped image, but it's very dramatic when it's in the newsfeed, okay? The one in the middle, um, a little bit boring, you know, in terms of the actual ad, but, you know, good use of color. You know, if someone wants free training, you know, for, you know, Facebook, you know, they're probably gonna, gonna opt in and, and watch his webinar or something like that. The last one is a pretty genius ad. Okay, Frank Kern's always using a lot of psychology. I love people that use psychology in their marketing. And he's got the word yes there, a nice big yes. You know what I mean? No other text, so, you know, it's not gonna, you know, uh, uh, break the 20% rule, but it's yes. It's like a, a hypnotic term. And then at the same time, he's got these crazy things coming out of his eyes, right? Very dramatic, okay? But again, it's a picture of a real person. That works well, in my opinion, in most cases, better than stock photos. All right, so are you guys, are you guys learning something? Yeah. Okay, all right. I know I, I, know I got to go fast because, you know, I want to cover a lot of stuff, you know, um, so that's just the way we got to roll. So dark posts. The thing that you have to understand about dark posts is, you know, when you advertise, you get consistent distribution. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk a little bit more about this, okay? But when you pay for advertising, you have more, you know, um, more ability to make sure that your ads get seen, okay? And you have to monitor your dark posts because they are live, okay? People will comment on them, and I've seen people, you know, that, that don't realize that, and, and there's all these negative comments that are, <laughs> that are on their ads, right? And other people are seeing that. But the nice thing about dark posts is if you interact with people, you can use some engagement. I think, I think Michelle and, and Diane are gonna be talking to, you know, a little bit about that tomorrow. You can use that in your ads, you know, to kind of you know, help spin them a little bit further. I love Evernote to, uh, to bookmark the URLs because it just, it just makes my life easier. So that's just a plug for Evernote, which is free. You guys use Evernote? Okay, cool. All right, so no like and trust. No like and trust, okay? In order to make a sale, people have to know, like, and trust you. And the people that are most likely to do that are your friends, okay? Now, how many people in here go into their Facebook, do a status update, and, you know, are hoping that all your friends see it? Okay? That's what everyone does. But, you know, you know I've, I've got, like, close to 5,000 friends. When I do an update, maybe 3 to 8% of them see it, probably a whole lot less, you know? So you gotta understand, if you're putting in the time to put a content, you know, into a, um, you know, just a, a free post, you might want to consider how you can spin that into an ad and then reach all your friends, okay? But the mindset is different. You need to pay to reach your friends, okay? It's not free anymore. A lot of people think, oh, Facebook is a free service. No, it's a corporation that makes a lot of money. And corporations, you know, their, their goal is to the shareholders to make more money. So here's an exercise just to prove this, okay? I want you to go to your friends list, scan your friends list, go all the way down. I've got 5,000 friends, so it takes at least five or 10 minutes because you know, it only loads like bit by bit. Scroll the whole thing. You're gonna see people there that you were like, oh yeah, I used to see their, their updates and interact with them and then I you know, haven't seen them for three months or haven't seen them for six months, right? Those people aren't seeing your posts in all, in all likelihood unless you're paying to do it. Okay, that's what edge rank is. And it has over 100 factors, but the fact is, you know, you have to pay to reach your friends now. And that's, I think, an important mind shift, mindset uh, shift in 2014. This is from adage.com. This is a, 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 um, in a, in a sales deck that was sent out from Facebook. We expect organic distribution of an individual page's posts to gradually decline over time as we continually work to make sure people have a meaningful experience on the site. A meaningful experience, I guess that means like more advertising in the newsfeed. What do you guys think? So, you know, the same thing's happening on, on, on personal side, okay? They have newsfeed ads. It's a great way for them to monetize their platform. So get in the mindset of, you know, paying for this information. All right, custom audiences. I want to spend some time on custom audiences because these are really, really cool. Okay, basically you can define your audience with a user-created list. You can break it down to a single user, but it's much more targeted than likes, 
okay? So it can allow you to target your buyers, your, your leads, your autoresponder auto subscribers, your Google contacts. And, you know, think about breaking those things up. Like, like, you know, go through your Google contacts or whatever, put them in different groups, and then upload them as separate groups, right? Uh, because you're going to be marketing to these people. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So with custom audience, you can upload phone numbers, you can upload emails, you can upload uh, FBIDs, that's just the, the unique you know, user number of each Facebook user, and you can up upload um, website visitors. So here's how to create a custom audience. You click on audience, uh, select data file, custom audience. In the top, you're gonna name it. Number two, you're gonna describe it. That's, that stuff is gonna come in when you start to type it as you're you know, doing your, your ad or your dark post. And then you're gonna select what you're gonna upload, okay? Emails, I usually get about 60 to 70%. Uh, what, what happens is you upload the emails, and Facebook looks if, any, if that uh, matches any Facebook records that they have, and if it does, bam, puts that person in the custom audience. Easy. Same with phone numbers or user IDs. Now, terms of service. You know, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit later. All right, custom audiences in the Power Editor. This is what it looks like. For me, this is, this is my account, you'll see that most of my custom audiences are between you know, 200 and, and 3,000 people. I like to keep them small, and you know, in some ads, I'll actually combine different custom audiences. But when you're setting up your ad, you do want to think like a coder. You want to think of including and excluding. Okay, and you know, it's very literal. And excludes override includes. So in the Power Editor, here's what you do under the Audience tab. You just select in box number two whatever custom audiences that you want to add that you want your ad to show to, and in number three, what ones you want to exclude, if any. Okay, uh, so it's very simple, but it's extremely targeted. This is a really important slide, and I want you to, uh, to write this down. These are my, what I consider mandatory custom audiences, meaning that all you guys here should, this weekend or whenever you get home, start creating some of these custom audiences that you can market to. Everyone in this room has Google or Outlook contacts or iPhone contacts that you can download and export and you know, start marketing to. Uh, hopefully you have autoresponder subscribers. Um, unsubscribers, why would you wanna you know, target your unsubscribers? Well, in most cases, you already have no like and trust with you. you know, they just unsubscribed from your list, but you know, maybe they're just trying to get a little sanity in their inbox. So they're still worth marketing to. Think about former downlines or exportable services like Wufu, or maybe, you know, um, I know magnetic sponsoring uh, let you, you know, export your, your leads, right? So those are leads that you've generated, um, and you can, you know, import them as a custom audience. Webinar registrants, your Facebook friends, I got an asterisk there because that's a little tricky. And your buyers, you know, if you have PayPal, download your history, open up the, the spreadsheet, take out all the emails, you got a custom audience of buyers who have bought from you before. So, with feeling, who in this room has some of these custom audiences that you're not marketing to right now? All right, so Facebook's position on custom audiences. A lot of legalese, it's contradictory and, and, and very vague. On the one hand, you know, Facebook is very, very open and, and they've had a lot of this stuff open in the API. Um, and then they recently closed some stuff off, but Technically, you're supposed to have permission from these people that you can market to them if you're uploading them in, in a custom audience. Now, that's a lot of legalese, you know, kind of like, you know, when most people visit my website, they don't scroll to the bottom before they go to any pages and read the terms of service and see what, you know, they're agreeing to and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But essentially, custom audiences were created so businesses could market to their customers and directly to their customer lists, okay? But marketers screw things up, okay? And it was a lot of this t-shirt guys, you know? Because they were doing things like, you know, yeah, t-shirts, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So t-shirts, so they were doing things like, you know, uh, this Susan loves her Dalmatian, right? Making a t-shirt like that because, you know, they could scrape a custom audience and use the graph search and only find the Susans that have Dalmatians. Well, people found that pretty creepy. So, <laughs> Yeah, so, so every time you go in the newsfeed, it's like, how do they know this? Like, you know what I mean? 
So, you know, that's kind of the problem. So right now they're, they're kind of in a flux mode about this. So just kind of be careful and, and you can decide what's, what's best for you to do. I'm just kind of, you know, explaining some stuff and, you know, talking off the cuff and that sort of thing. What I like about it is there's a higher technical barrier to entry. Okay, so it means there's gonna be less people doing custom audiences because, you know, there were a whole bunch of people that were doing this and scraping groups and, and all kinds of stuff. All right, so here's how you find uh, anyone's user ID because you can, again, find uh, upload user IDs. Graph.facebook.com forward slash whatever their username is. And this is mine, I just kind of blurred out my ID, but I mean, you can go there and figure it out. It's, it's public, you know, um, anyhow, so there's not much point in that. So, friends list, okay? I think one of the best things to market to is your friends. Obviously, you know, you're friends with them, you do updates, you want them to see it, why not market to them, okay? If you wanted to do this, this is what you could do. You go to the friends tab, scroll all the way down, click view source code, you know, whatever your browser, and then copy and paste that, give that to some outsourcer and say, hey, find all the UIDs here, right? And you could do that for any, you know, page that you wanna load on, on Facebook. You know, same idea, okay? There are some tools out there that, 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 that can do that, but, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna get into that here. All right, so the beta meinhof phenomenon, okay? That's when you start, you know, maybe you're making a buying decision, like, you know, when I first bought a, a, an Isuzu Trooper, which is a kind of like a, a, not a common car here, started seeing them everywhere, you know, and I, I'd never seen them before. That's the beta meinhof phenomenon. What's interesting about it is when it starts to happen, you go from a neutral position to like, oh yeah, there's an Isuzu Trooper. I got one of those. Oh yeah, there's an Isuzu Trooper. So it, it takes you from neutral to slightly positive. Who thinks that is pretty cool to do in the mind of your prospect without them knowing what you're doing? Yes. All right, so that's retargeting. Now I know Nick covered uh, retargeting, but basically what it is, a user visits your website, the retargeting pixel will fire, okay? And then the user leaves your website. And when that user visits Facebook, they're gonna see your ad instantly. So if they're on your website and then they log off and a minute later they're on Facebook, they're gonna see your ad. And Facebook will tend to show that to new, new visitors, you know, because they know how powerful it is. So this is why it's really important. It updates in real time instantly, okay? It converts prospects who have already shown interest. You guys all should be using retargeting because if someone's already been on your website, that's a very targeted you know, lead. Um, it's comparably inexpensive to other forms of, of, of targeting, and it's an automatically highly targeted group, okay? It also tends towards a positive experience, because if someone's been on your site and then they see it again, you know, the act of recognition is very powerful and allows you to basically stalk your prospect all around Facebook and the web, okay? So there's some really cool psychology that goes on here, and I kind of think people like to, like to understand the why, um, and, then, and then they're able to do it, or maybe that's just how I am. But uh, immediacy and recognition, okay, it actually fires an endorphin. If there's a song that you hate that's caught in your head, at least when you, oh, oh that's the name of it, that's a positive thought, and then you can let it go, right? So that's recognition, that's creating like an endorphin. That happens when people see your retargeting ads. Endorphins and positive recognition create trust and trust is required for any sale. All right, re, re, uh, retargeting also uh, does a repetition of, of the sales message. So, you know, that old thing of, yeah, seven to 12 follow-ups that, you know, is statistically not, you know, even proven, but everyone says, you know, but still repetition is, is good. It also suggests validation. When people see something repeatedly, okay, um, it's going to validate, you know, it in their own mind, right? If they keep seeing that, it's gonna be like, oh yeah, it's like a little bit of social proof, okay? Also, when people can't get away from your ads, tremendous social proof. That's probably one of the most powerful, um, you know, marketing principles, social proof. And, you know, um, yeah, so, so basically multiple channels, when people see your, your ad in multiple different, you know, things at the same time, that also kind of builds that social proof, builds that trust, and all that stuff. So, Retargeting on Facebook is called website custom audiences, and you can retarget your website. You can also retarget your links using this tool, okay? Simpleurl.com, um, which is um, uh, my, my business partner's uh, tool there, and it's, and it's free. Um, so there's just no E there, and there isn't supposed to be. 
So here's how you set up retargeting on Facebook. You're gonna go to, uh, again, audience, create an audience, and you're gonna click where it says one, custom audience from your website. You're going to uh, click create audience. You're gonna grab that code there, put it on your, on your site, and, uh, and then click that, you know, create audience. And what you're gonna do is you, you're gonna name it, again, you know, name, description, and then um, you could basically just do all website visitors or just certain pages, and you can do up to 180 days. Now, I like doing up to 180 days myself because I know for a fact that, you know, people buy from me years later, and, you know, so that doesn't bother me, but, you know, some people would uh, disagree, which is fine. Uh, here's what simple URL looks like. Basically, it attaches retargeting code to any link. So you just, you know, put your link there, uh, you put whatever destination URL, and you just paste in your targeting code there. So what that means is you can actually retarget people that, that you send like an affiliate link to. So you send an affiliate link out to your site, you can retarget that. Um, you know, if it's a replicated site, doesn't allow you to add custom targeting code, you can do it that way, okay? Here's a couple of uh, retargeting ads. And, um, you know, the, the one on the left is a, is a newsfeed ad. The other one is, is um, a product that, that me and my, my business partner put out called Simple Retargeting. And I like what Nick said about, you know, not mentioning, hey, this is retargeting, but that product was actually about retargeting, so it, it, it did make sense. All right. Um, you guys use uh, Aweber? Anyone here use Aweber? Okay. So if you use Aweber, what you can do is you can click on, uh, what is that, email, uh, email template manager, number one. And then number two, you can edit your template and you can add in code there. Okay, now, unfortunately, it doesn't take the Facebook code because it's, it's a script, um, but it does take code from other things like image pixels uh, that you can retarget with perfect audience. All right, we're gonna get into some Facebook ad tips now. Okay, this is what works great in ads. Anyone know the um, Zagarnik effect? Anyone heard of that? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the Zagarnik effect, you guys all should know this. This is what like, the whole thing of like, loss was, was based around. It's basically the cliffhanger, okay? Um, and so when you, you, when you have an incomplete experience, human's need is to satisfy that, and that's what keeps them coming back week after week after week to these you know, TV shows. Um, if it's curiosity, uh, or if it's relevant, use curiosity. I don't like that you know, weird baby stuff, but you know, I've already said that. Uh, be different, innovate. Don't be afraid to trust your own instincts. Use up to 20% text because it does show up and, you know, use your personal picture. I think in a lot of cases, you know, that's your brand. So, you know, use it. All right, so bidding strategy. There's basically three things, cost per click, okay? Uh, CPM, which is cost per 1,000 impressions and optimized CPM, cost per 1,000 impressions. Cost per click is generally, um, you know, seems to be the most uh, expensive. What you want to do with cost per click is you want to disqualify. So you don't want to ever use that for stuff that's free, okay? Um, because you want people to be a little bit more qualified before they, before they click in it. In fact, you might even want to, you know, in some cases, put a price there that would, you know, uh, detract people from just, you know, curiosity clickers. I like doing CPM or, or optimized CPM where Facebook just you know, figures out what, what the budget is. Usually whatever they say the budget is, I bid higher than that and pay way less than, you know, than that. And that's probably because of, you know, the, the targeting. If you do targeting, it's gonna save you a lot of money. Um, here are some standard exclusions that I do. I don't advertise to people under 22 or uh, usually over 60, and I include, you know, those countries uh, in, my, in my marketing. That's just me, but, you know, you can test and do it yourself. So I wanna mention lookalike audiences. Okay, lookalike audiences are new. Basically, again, I think Facebook's trying to, you know, uh, pull the wool over people's eyes because even if you do very, you know, similar as opposed to very, you know, uh, expanding your reach, it's still very broad and you're really relying on them to do a good job targeting and I think they're gonna send you, um, you know, not the best stuff. All right, so reports. A lot of people don't know you can pull the reports. The way that you learn reports and the only way that you learn reports is by going in, making a new report, selecting some of the different options, and having an ad and just looking at it, okay? That's how you're gonna learn how to do that. Here's what, I, what uh, you know, basics you know, of the reports that you should really understand. Frequency is the number of times each person saw your ad. So I often like to have a really high frequency. Um, 
you know, just to really, you know, uh, like just so, so people just can't get away from it. Reach is the number of people your ad was served to, right, which is different than, than the targeting group. So you could have a targeting group of 3,000 and, you know, maybe 1,000 people, you know, your, your ad was actually served to. And click-through rate, number of clicks divided by number of impressions. Audience insights, uh, Chris did a great job of, of explaining what this is. It's a great tool for just digging deep and, uh, and exploring. Um, and you can definitely find some great targets for doing that. Uh, that would be better. This is my targeting hierarchy, okay? If I were a brand new marketer and I wanted to start again and you know, wanted to target the best people for my marketing, I'd market to my friends first, and then I'd market to custom audiences that I got from, you know, let's say targeted groups or something like that. Then I'd do people that have been to my website. Precise interest is a little bit different because Facebook kind of, they kind of block that from, from marketers unless you're using like a third party tool. So I want to mention that, but not, you know, I don't really have time to, to get right into that. Lookalike audiences and then broad interests. I'm really not a fan of, of broad interests. Last thing, always track your conversions. I know it's Vegas, but if you're not, you're just gambling. And multi-channel marketing, okay? I want you to think in 2014 about your business and how you can be hitting people from multiple verticals at the same time, okay? Especially at the same time, because that's gonna increase your results. What it does is it moves a new prospect from neutral to slightly positive, and that's gonna create sales. So multi-channel marketing would be like, you know, maybe you, know, you send out an email to your list, but you also got your, your list on, um, on, on retargeting. So you're, you're, you're advertising to them as well. You got a custom audience of people on your subscribers. And so you're hitting people from multiple channels. So they're seeing the same offer from you, in the email, when they go on Facebook, when they're being retargeted around the web, that is very powerful, and that's how you should start thinking of, of doing your business. So just quickly to summary, we talked about you know, how to target correctly, what kind of ads work best, you know, how, to, how, to, how to get to the sale um, you know, before just selling. Custom audiences retargeting and psychology that I think uh, really you know, helped you out. So at the end of the day, what you have to do is trust yourself, even if what you think disagrees with me or any of the other people. Because once you start getting that trust in yourself, that's where you know that you're really doing it as a marketer, okay? And be willing to do it and not be perfect. Perfectionism is the number one thing that will ax your results. And don't be satisfied because you took some notes. You will not know this until you have done it a whole lot of times and made mistakes. It's like riding a bike. No one here learned how to ride a bike from a book or a course or anything like that. It's from doing it again and again and again and making mistakes. And I don't know why schools teach people not to make mistakes, but it's important, you know, if you want to get successful at it. So think of it as a good thing. All right, and that's my son. He's doing great. And if you want the slide deck and whatever, after I get back from my vacation, go to andrewmurrayhq.com forward slash NES5. So, did you guys get some good value out of this? All right. All right, so um, final thing, uh, we have a, a DVD in the back that's free if, if you wanna get it, but um, since it's Vegas, and I've been actually working on my, on my magic a little bit, I'm wondering if you guys can help me out. What I want everyone to do is go three, two, one, and then snap. And when that's gonna happen, I'm gonna snap two and I'm gonna transport myself to the back of the room. Can we all do that? Okay. Three, two, one. All right, thanks everybody.